Okay, so uh, the session is mainly based on offline analytics, but I will start by just demonstrating how the customized uh, filters work. I know Milagros explained this on the previous session. Uh, but we have five objectives. The first one, as I'm saying, is just to understand how the customization of the filters um, are displayed or rendered in the Android app. Then the other four are for the um, uh, offline analytics. The first one is how to configure the Android setting in the Android settings uh, web app then how to visualize those analytics that you configure, how to configure the groups that you will see that in analytics, you could uh, group um, the ones that you wanted to be together. And then uh, the last objective is for you to know how to use the filters. Right now we have two filters available, which is state and organization units. So first filters, of course, you know that you need to configure this in the Android settings web app. You could customize the filters and the completion spinner that is located on, at the top of the bar in the form on an event. And uh, we have two different um, settings. We have the global setting and we have the specific one that are for uh, programs and data sets. So let's go to the server here. Uh, we, we can customize in the section of appearance. We have home screen program and data set. In this example, I'm going to use program. As you could see here, we have the global settings, which practically has everything enabled. We have the percentage and all the different filters. But then I have a specific program, which is case-based surveillance. If I go here, click uh, in edit, I will see that I only have enabled two filters, the enrollment date and the follow-up. Of course, to create this or to configure this, I just click on it or unclick, click again to disable it, sorry, and then save the program. And once I save, I need to save again here. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to visualize this on Android. Okay, so let's see it here. If I go to, for example, contact registration, which is not in a specific program, if I go here and then click on the filters, I'm going to see that I have everything in here, all the filters. And if I create it, I don't know, I, I don't have any TIs here, but if I had any TI, I will see that I can see the completion percentage at the form. But if I go to my specific um, uh, case, which is, uh, case-based surveillance, my program. Then if I, sorry, if I go here and open the filter, oh, sorry, this is not my, is this one. If I go here and click here, you'll see I only have the two that I enable, which is the enrollment date and the follow-up. And if I go to any of the TIs and open an event, I won't be able to see the spinner at the top of the form. Okay, now we can go to the offline analytics. Uh, so to, we have four different uh, screens in which we could add analytics, which are home, programs, data sets, and the TI dashboard. The first three, this one, uh, we configure them in a particular way that have a similar process and the TI dashboard is kind of different. We're going to see it later. All of these analytics are calculated locally. This means what, when we are making the first login and the app is um, making that synchronization, uh, I'm not downloading any data from the server that is uh, specifically for the analytic that I configure. This means that when I create um, TIs on the device or if I have downloaded TIs uh, from the server, then that is what the analytic used to populate the information that you're going to see on the analytic per se. And finally, again, uh, you cannot configure um, any of these charts or tables in the Android app. You must use the Android settings web app. And it's not here, uh, but every analytic that you use for home programs and data sets, you create it first on the data visualizer application in the web server. 
Okay, now let's start with TI analytics. As I was saying, the TI analytics are displayed on the TI dashboard. The idea is to populate a chart or um, yeah, chart to visualize the evolution of data elements or program indicators. What I mean by evolution, I mean that you have to, you, you, you're gonna see uh, different values located in different time periods. So for that, this requires that the data elements that you're using and the program indicators that you're using um, contains, in the, in the case of the program indicators, contains data elements that belong to a repeatable stage. And for data elements, of course, uh, also they need to be numeric and in a repeatable program stage. Why repeatable? Because we need, again, to see uh, the data in the different period of time. Now let's see how to configure them. As you could see here in the visualization type, we have five type of charts that you could add or, or tables that you could add in the TI dashboard. We have bar, line, pivot, single, and WHO nutrition. For the first four, I have grouped them because you configure them uh, following the same steps. But for the WHO nutrition, I have a different slide that I'm going to show next, uh, the slightly change when you uh, select. Okay, so for the first four, first you click on add TI analytics on the Android settings, and then you choose a program and a program stage. The Android settings app facilitates the list of the program stage because it only allows you to select uh, repeatable stages. It won't show you the ones that are not repeatable. Then you choose the title and the name of the analytic. You could add a short name, but this is optional. Then you choose uh, the visualization type, which is bar, line, pivot, single. Uh, in this case, in this example, I'm going to use a line chart. And then you choose a period type. Period type could be daily, monthly, yearly, etc. And finally, you choose the visualization element, which is what are you tracking through time. In this case, I chose a data element, and the data element that I chose is called height. Okay. Then, if I go to the WHO nutrition, um, the first like one and two steps are are basically the same, which is chose the program and the stage and add the title. So I chose the same, a child program and baby postnatal program stage and a title, which is not here in the, um, in the screen. Then you choose the WHO nutrition, which is here. And it provides you, when you click on it, it provides you this whole new information that are uh, particularly for the WHO. Um, the idea, as you may know, is to assess the growth considering a child's age and measurements. So we have those three options. We have height for age, weight for age, or weight for height in case you don't have an age attribute associated to your uh, program. So in this case, in this example, I'm going to use weight for height. Then you need to select the gender. This is an attribute, so uh, it displays the the attribute list, you select gender, then you add a title for female, a title for male, and finally you choose the X and the Y axis. And in this case, if I'm using weight for height, I'm using height as an X and weight as a Y. Let's see how this is displayed in Android. Here is the first line chart that I configured. As you could see, we have two different um, values in two different times and in this one is November 9 I think and it's 85 centimeters and then we have November 29 and 97 I guess it says sorry I cannot see well and um, as you could see we, we could perfectly have a lot of different values in a lot of different times we only have two data elements two events sorry with two data elements filled and for the WHO one, uh, we have each line that represents uh, the C score and indicates the distance from the average, which is the green one here. And so it, locate, it locates the C score 
here, as you could see in the two points. Okay, now uh, let's talk about home programs and data set visualizations that are configured a bit different from the TI. Uh, we need to follow these five steps. In the following um, three slides, I have these steps with more details. I'm not going to, to display that, but you could check it out later uh, when you're studying. So we have these five steps. The first one is to select the program or data set. Of course, if this is if we're configuring a home visualization, we don't need to select a program or data set. We just jump into step two, which is select the visualization. The visualization list that I'm going to show you later in the server, you'll see that it's already filtered by the Android settings app because we have some restrictions or limitations of what we can display on the Android app. Um, let me just show you quickly here. These are the valid visualizations that the Android settings app uh, filter first. So for visualization type for now, we just support column line, pipe, pivot table, single values and rated charts. We have relative periods only, and those are the ones um, that we support. Uh, dimensions for row and dimensions for column, and then organization units. Okay, so let me go back here. After we select our visualization, we add an alternative title, which in case you think that the name of the visualization, it's too long and your screen device is too small, then you could add an alternative title uh, for the device. Then you could group the chart with other charts that are, I don't know, associated. Uh, if you need to, this is also optional and you could create as many groups as you need and as many charts as well as you need in the group. And finally, you have to save. Again, this step is really, really important because you have to save twice. You have, first you need to add the analytic and then save just to be able to visualize this on Android. Okay, so let's go to the server. We have to configure analytics. We have this new section called analytics and we have TI, home, program, and data set. For this demo, I'm going to use home and data set, but a uh, program works the same as the other two. Okay, let's go to home first. You see, I already have two different groups, groups here. One is aggregated weekly surveillance and the other one is confirmed cases and death, okay? In each one, I have just one chart. But if I want to add a new one, then I go and click here and add home visualization. And I have uh, two options. I could just go through the list and select the one that I need, or I could type in the Apple filter and then I could select. Then again, I could uh, add a title visualization, the title visualization, and in case I wanted to, then I could disable the group visualization or I could create a new one in case I don't want to associate it to any of this already created, or I could select a created group visualization that is going to display the two I already had. Okay, and in every section, in home program and data set, we're going to find this visualization user test, which what basically does is when you type a specific uh, user, let's say this one, what it allows me to do is when I run the test, it tells me, okay, this user can visualize the selected visualization that you select, that, that, that you configure there. Okay, if I don't have any permissions, if the user doesn't have any permissions, that it would say uh, the user cannot visualize uh, and the, the name of the visualization. And what are the main uh, validations that we that the Android settings app use here is that the user has a full authority or that the chart or table is public, has a public access, that the user has individual sharing to that particular chart or table. And finally, that the user could be in a group and the group has access um, to that particular chart or table. 
this is optional. Again, you don't have to run uh, the tests every time you create it, but it's a, I think it's a, a, a really useful tool um, just to understand if, they, if the user can visualize this or not in the Android app. Okay, then you will add home visualization. I'm not going, not going to do it. And then you need to click here on save again. And for data sets is exactly the same. I have, in this case, I don't have uh, a group. This is an individual or um, default chart. If I go click uh, here and add a new data set, a new data visualization, then I will select first the data set. In this case, we only have one. And then I will select, uh, I will follow the same steps which is selecting a new one. I could add a title. I could create a new group. In this case, as you could see, I don't have the option to select a created group because I don't have any created. So it allows me to create a new one or to disable them. And again, I will go here and add data set visualization. And once I click here, then I should save again here just to be able to visualize that in the Android app. Okay, now let's see how the Android renders this information. If I go back, when you are logging in, uh, probably in the first two or three days of the Academy, you only were able to see the programs and probably not this. And that is because if you don't have any configuration on the Android settings app, then this uh, tab won't appear. But since we have it, I click on here on the analytics tab and I'll see two groups, the aggregated weekly surveillance and the confirmed cases and death. Same for the data sets. If I go to my data set, which is right here and I click here, you see that the analytics tab now appears and it displays uh, the chart that I um, configured. And it, every uh, data information that is displaying in here is based on the aggregated information that I have here of all the periods in the data set. If, for example, if I delete my local data, then when I click on here, I, would, won't, I won't be seeing anything. It will be in blank because it's working with, with this information, okay? Let me go back here. So these three slides, as I was saying, is just the same that, I, that we just go through, but is a more detailed step-by-step -step that you could check out later. So for groups, we already um, discussed them, but as I was saying, it, the group is displayed as this button at the top of the bar of the analytics screen on home, data sets, or programs. Uh, you could create as many groups as you need, and there's no limit for now of charts per group. Okay, so we have um, some pictures of the visualizations uh, that we are supporting now. We have tables, we have radar charts, we have pie charts, bar charts, single values, and I think I'm missing the line chart, but we already saw that in, in the Android app. Let's go back here. Uh, if I go here, you'll see that it downloads uh, a default chart that it's created on the data visualizer on the web server. But uh, we can, for some of the charts, we could change them through an to another one. For example, the bar chart, I could change that to view as a line. In this case, I only have one year, so that's why I show it like that. Uh, or I could see it as a table or I could see it as a single value because these are program indicators. So it shows me uh, the value for each program indicator that I'm displaying. And this uh, changes of visualization works the same uh, for line, single values and tables, all can change uh, between among each other. But for uh, pie charts and radar charts, you could only move from a radar chart to a table and a pie chart um, to a table. But you cannot, of course, um, change it to a bar chart or a line chart. 
Okay, now let's talk about filters. We have two different uh, filters available. We have periods and we have org units. For periods, we have all this list, daily, weekly, monthly. And for org units, we have uh, two possibilities. We could select all, which are all the org units available to that particular user, or we could select just one specific or, or all multiple org units, but not all. So let's see that in the Android app. Again, if I go here and click, um, let's view it as a bar. For example, if I don't want to see it per year, I want to see it monthly, I would choose period. And then I will go to monthly here and I could select uh, any of these options, let's say last three months. And here it, it's gonna ask me if I want to display the current period. So it will be showing me four periods, uh, the three previous and this one, or if I only want to see the three previous, then I say no. And it's only going to show me the three that we have here. We could uh, click on the, on the bars just to see the values. Probably my screen device is not too uh, big for you to see, but here it's going to show you the period and then the value. And here's the value, but if I click, it shows me again the same value, but with the period. I think it's just to have um, um, a more clear view of the information that you're selecting. You could also select the series here. If I click here, it's going to show me um, the specific series that I'm uh selecting okay and if i no longer want to see the information like that i want to reset the filters then i go and click here and either i could change that of uh, to another filter or i just click on reset and it goes back to the default and i let me just move here you can also zoom in in case you need to see a particular uh, point in time. And again, you could click on it just to see the specific period. And you could, of course, zoom out if you want to see the whole picture. Okay. Here's just the example of, of how to apply a filter. And then finally, I have four different links for you, which I think it, it's really helpful documentation. The Android app, the settings app, which is part of the Android app documentation. Um, and then we have created with the team two different um, documents. The first one is the offline analytics Q&A that you'll find probably some information of questions that you may have of the, um, of the offline analytics. And again, if, if there is a new question that comes after this session, we could add it here with the, with the answer. And then we have the limitations. This is really important because it shows you per dimension, uh, data, period, um, fixed period, et cetera, everything that, in, that can be included into a visualization or analytic, and if we support it or not. And here in the columns, you'll see we have pivot table, column, line, only the ones that we support, pi, radar, and single value. And the green ones are the ones we support. And of course, the other ones are the ones that we do not support um, yet. And that's it for the session. If you have any questions, please let me know. That was a great session, Nancy. I think it's amazing to see the analytics. Let me look for the agenda because are we <clears throat> entering into a break? Before yeah, you two, in two minutes. Okay, so let's see if there are questions. I didn't see any questions on Slack about this. Let me check again. Chanara is asking, is it possible to set permissions for user group or specific users? I, 
Nancy, do you want to answer? I think this goes with uh, each chart. For the yeah. analytics? Yeah, exactly. So for each uh, data visual, the visualizer uh, analytic that you create, um, the user, if, if that particular analytic is not public, has not public sharing, then yes, your user must be or individual sharing or uh, in a group that uh, has that uh, sharing setting on the analytic. And then Gitika, Deepika is asking uh, if we have access, if, if they also don't have access to analytics. And this is the same than before Deepika, it goes with the permission of your user. You need the all permission and we did not enable that permission in your roles. So, uh, so no, the, we will not require you to do changes in the analytics configurations for the exercise, uh, but no. The, we cannot give you access for this uh, training course. Is that correct, Nancy? Yes, correct. Yes. But I think you can in, in play, in the play server, you do have, I know, but they don't have permissions there, no, Jaime, we said before. But they can change. No, by default, they don't have it, but you can always create a user with full full, full yeah. authority. So with the authority all, and then you can do whatever. Yes. As someone was asking if there are not exercises on this, yes, there are uh, in the next session. So in, now we will have the long break of the day, which is 20 minutes. And after this, the exercises about the uh, offline analytics will be explained by Nancy as well.